Uh, this is, of course, one of the high points of not just the day, but of the whole conference. Uh, this is where we get to celebrate the successes uh, that we all enjoy as a team and as a community, and this is always great. This is uh, kind of a lengthy story, and I'm, I, I read this with rapt attention when I was given the, the script here. Um, described by his family and friends as caring, compassionate, and always willing to help, Jacob Safing, I'm saying that correctly. I didn't get a chance to meet Kobe before we get it. You were surrounded by fans down there. I wanted to shake hands, but we'll get it late. It's okay. He's a celebrity here. Uh, better known as Kobe, was helping a friend's grandmother move furniture after soccer practice. We always hear about Bible sales and things like that. I think when we all know that's just garbage in the trauma community, but he was a young man actually out doing good things for the community. Uh, on August 23rd, 2018, at 8.17 p.m., a call was made to 911. Kobe was involved in a single car accident. Kobe's car went left of center and off the roadway. The driver's side of his car struck a tree line near the roadway, then ricocheted up and across the roadway, resting to the side of the road. The accident location was remote, on the border of two fire departments, Concord Green Volunteer Fire Department and Paint Creek Joint Fire District, with emergency medical services for the area provided by Fayette County EMS. The initial dispatch involved Concord Green Fire Department and Fayette County EMS. Dispatched on the call was paramedic Dwayne Monocle and EMT Tyler Osborne. Because of the call's nature and location, Dwayne requested assistance from Paint Creek and Concord Green Fire Departments as well as MedFlight. He knew that this was going to be tough getting in and out of here. MedFlight 2 and Allen Center was the closest available helicopter with an ETA of about 45 minutes. Concord Green's Byron Gustin was the first firefighter to arrive. He assessed the vehicle damage and Kobe's injuries. Kobe was unconscious and had sustained multiple fractures to the left side of his body, including a possible skull fracture. Spinal precautions were in, uh, initiated and Kobe's airway was protected. Extrication was difficult, as it often is. Driver's side had sustained about 12 inches of intrusion and the crushed roof had entrapped Kobe. Jeff Skaggs and Troy Cockrell of Concord Green used Paint Creek's extrication tools while Lieutenant Kyle Stevens of the Paint Creek ran the extraction. Paint Creek paramedics Jason Gleick, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, Mike Miter, and Kenny Dennis assisted and tended to Kobe's injuries. The crews removed the driver's door. Kobe was successfully pulled from the vehicle, placed on the backboard, and moved to the ambulance. Are you showing pictures of this right now? My goodness. We very rarely get to see the pictures. It's always very, it's always very striking. Dwayne, Tyler, Jason, Mike, and Kenny worked to stabilize Kobe. Kobe's airway was filling with blood. Intubation was attempted three times, but without a paralytic medication available, the crew was unable to stop Kobe's jaw from clenching down, and a rescue airway was placed successfully, though. While awaiting MedFlight's arrival, team members continued to manage Kobe's injuries and maintain his airway. Upon arrival, MedFlight paramedic Zach Justice and flight nurse paramedic Debbie Haslow were updated on Kobe's condition. Zach and Debbie administered paralytics and analgesic medications, removed the rescue airway, and placed an endotracheal tube before moving to the helicopter. It's now 9.24 p.m. Remember, it was 8.17 when the first call goes out. Kobe was outside of the golden hour. Nobody's fault, just a remote location with a lot of good people helping. The flight from the scene to Grant Level 1 Trauma Center took an additional 24 minutes. Zach and Debbie continued working to stabilize Kobe. However, his heart rate started to climb as blood pressure began to drop. Zach and Debbie knew Kobe was bleeding internally. Through their efforts, Kobe stabilizes and was delivered to the trauma team at Grant. It remains unclear as to why Kobe veered off the road that night. He doesn't remember the accident. No other car seemed to have been involved, and no bystanders reported witnessing the event. But we're happy to report Kobe is doing well, and he's here with us today with, I think, his, the entire town that he's from. I think, I think the first four rows are just uh, folks from the hometown. Uh, Cody, or Kobe, I want you to join us on stage. If, it'd be, uh, if we could, I would love for Mom Heather and Dad Derek to join us. And we'd also, if we could, uh, specifically Byron Gustin from Concord Green, who was the first EMS on the scene. If you're willing to come up and visit with us, we'd love that. Dwayne Monocle from Fayette County EMS, who was the in-charge medic and helped throughout this entire ordeal. Uh, MedFlight, Debbie Haslow. And Zach Justice, if you guys are here and would like to come up and say hi, and really anyone else who wants to come up and visit, we would love to have you up here. Kobe, thank you for being here. Now I get to shake your hand. Thank well, you. Thank you for being here.
here. Round of applause for Kobe and his family. Come on up there, Kobe, if you don't mind. Nothing like putting you on the spot this afternoon, right? That's all good. <laughs> what do you remember from that night? Uh, I don't really remember anything. It's like, I remember, like, bits and pieces are starting to come back about soccer season and everything before that, but I don't remember, you know, anything about driving home, you know, going left to center. I don't remember anything really. <clears throat> so you don't remember all of these people just out there, uh, no. a whole crowd of folks that no, nobody can blame you for that, man. Tell us a little about your care, your time at Grant, if you remember any. And this is not just self-serving because I work at Grant. We really, we really want to know. What do you remember? Mom and Dad, feel free to hop in too. I, I don't remember anything from Grant. I only be, started becoming aware at like... Well, about November of, yeah. Nationwide, mm -hmm, at yeah. Nationwide Children. So, I mean, at Grant, um, the first thing I remember is, I guess, getting there about 10.30 at night um, and waiting to hear something, which we really didn't talk to anybody until probably 11.15-ish, mm -hmm. something. Um, and that's kind of the first report to hear, you know, he has multiple skull fractures, a bleed on the brain, um, compound fractures to arm and leg. Um, the first thing they want to do is put a, uh, what was that, the drain? <laughs> in his head, and so, you know, they, the ICP, right? Mm -hmm. So they want you to sign consent for that. Um, and it just kind of started from there, a whole whirlwind of, you know, not getting to see him until I think about 3.30 in the morning. And that was when he was in the ICU, ventilator breathing for him. Um, that was shocking to see. We've shown him pictures since he doesn't remember anything. <laughs> it's kind of, um, Grant was amazing. I mean, we had, great nurses, great doctors who I felt like did above and beyond what they would need to do. In fact, I teased one of our nurses, one of the, I think it was the first day, I asked her if she ever used the restroom or ate, <laughs> because she never left. I that answer is no, I've seen no, I've been on <laughs> She just pretty much stayed right there checking machines all the time. Um, um, just a phenomenal experience, I guess, the whole time, not knowing whether or not he was going to make it at that point or not. Um, but they were, you know, always gave us just enough information to keep us okay, content. Yeah. <laughs> um, and kind of always ended everything, no matter how, gr you know, grim, grim and dark and bad the news they had to feed us. They always ended with, remember, he's 18 years old. And, you know, his brain is still, they use that plasticity there a lot. They use that word with us. Um, and to hold on to hope. And so that's what we did. Just keep hoping every day. And... Here we are. So we'll let you continue on since he doesn't remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> How did you find, uh, what was rehab like at Children's? Rehab was amazing to say the least. Like I don't remember like them sitting me up or anything like that, but I remember like, it's weird how the brain is. It's like, I remember like rolling around in the hospital bed, not like rolling, rolling, but like turning. And I just remember like looking at people and that's, all I remember from that point and then then I remember them getting me, to, getting me up to walk and that was I did not like that to say the least <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty mad <laughs> it was but as soon as I started walking it was like my uh, I don't know what to call it like a my uh, my drive to like work so much started to come back and like once I got walking with a tram and a gate belt, that started, it went from like here to like, it just skyrocketed, so. That's awesome. But You get a little taste of it and you want to do more and yeah, more and more, right? Yeah, it was like that big time. That's wonderful. I want to talk to a couple of the folks that are also here up on stage. Byron Gustin. Yep. Tell us what you think. You were the first man on the scene. What does this look like? We see the pictures there. Uh, yeah, so um, being a volunteer, you know, um, I started out, I was cooking steaks on the grill, and uh, just recently had a, um, a little one, so my wife came out and said, your pager went off, and um, you know, that it was somewhat close by, and, and so I, I responded to the scene directly uh, instead of going to the station, and... Um, so you just show up in your car, you're yeah, driving Yeah, in my out personal there. vehicle, yeah, we've got the option of... of if it's closer for us to go to the scene rather than getting a truck, um, we've got enough uh, responders to pick up a truck that will 
that will meet us there. So I was able to, to be there first and uh, get in there and, and assess, the, assess the situation and, and very heavy damage. What, you know, as a first responder, we, we've been to enough of them that it didn't look good. Um, and so we, uh, anyway, assessed them and called in to, uh, for, for med flight right off the bat and uh, told the funny part of the situation is, is he was, you know, swollen up and given the situation of, of blood pumping and stuff and called him in as a 30-year-old male at that time. <laughs> and uh, so kind of got a kick out of that afterwards. I, I don't want to know how old people think I would be in a car <laughs> You have a 70 year old male. Here. <laughs> so, uh, did that, and um, uh, you know, soon after, uh, Dade County EMS was there, and um, and uh, and then the R fire trucks uh, arrived along with Paint Creek, and and uh, then you know, started started getting them out of the car and cutting on it. Can I ask uh, Dwayne Monocle? Thank you for being here, by the way. So, tell me, how are you guys organizing? Between the two, you guys are the first ones on here. You're, they're calling you the, the chief. You're the charge medic. You're the man. In charge, I'm not a yeah. chief. What do you, <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what are you doing? How, how are you dividing the labor? How, how are you guys? You have uh, county people, uh, uh, several different joint fire districts. You have so many people on there, and you work together so well. How, how does that go? Is that something you guys practice for? Is it just intuition at that point? We train a little bit with the Fayette County has six fire, well, more, but six departments are dispatched by their county sheriff's office. We train with them a lot. We go on a lot of runs with them. They come help us out on medical runs. Um, we have two man crews. Some, most of our crews are double medics. But we do have some that are medic basic, so it just depends. Um, and probably around half of our staff also volunteers on the local fire departments or is at least familiar because they run with the fire department somewhere. Um, even if, I mean, just like most places, I mean, even if it's something that, for some example, I don't like somebody personally when, when I'm on scene that, that goes out the way and it's like, hey, let's do this. The guys in the county on the fire side, they know what to do. Um, Byron got there probably, I don't know, what, good eight, ten minutes before we did because it was about 15 minutes drive time and the roads were clear from our station. And when he got there and told us it was entrapment, they gave us a little he heads up to start another truck from Paint Creek, which was closer than our second truck, mm -hmm. and get med flight in the air so we'd save some time there. But then getting the resources there is always a problem because Paint Creek's in a different county, mm -hmm. so there's a delay in... From the time I request it, to our dispatch calls theirs, and then they get dispatched. So, mm -hmm. so Debbie and Tech, please join us too. You guys land on the scene here. You've got a dozen EMS and, and fire folks. What, what do you guys see? What's it look like when you get in? Please. Okay. Um, we jumped in the back of the medic. The car looked a mess, you know, just from high. It's a tight LZ. Circled around. The car was a mess. I thought, Holy cow, we're getting into something good. Not really good, but you know what I mean. <laughs> this is a crowd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, it, we jump in the back of the medic, and we just become part of their team. Let us know what you're doing, and Zach and I just stepped right in, stepped with these guys, took care of the airway, uh, stabilized him, some splinted a little bit, and then uh, got him loaded up. And then I think during the uh, transport too, like they had said, his pulse started to drop. Uh, he started to bottom out his pressure. Uh, we figured with the injuries that were established at that point that there was some bleeding going on. So we uh, gave him the TXA uh, just based off of all of his symptoms and his vitals. Uh, it seemed to have worked. We gave him some uh, fluids. Uh, it seemed to balance and stabilize after we did that. It maintained it with some pressors and uh, we were able to get him there a little bit more stabilized than when we started. That's awesome. Kobe, what are you up to these days? Well, I'm graduating high school this, this Friday. There we go. <laughs> I'll clap too because I'm excited, so I'm clapping too. And what, what, what next? Well, summer. Yeah, <laughs> that is, that's, that's summer, that's a uh, time to relax and chill. Uh, yeah, which... do you remember when you were 18 and summer was a time to relax and chill? <laughs> yeah. The trauma surgeon, the crew see summer like, oh, Lord, here it comes. 
but I'm planning on going to college, Excellent. a, a uh, community college for the first year, just to kind of see how things go, and sure. then transfer to whatever school I well not whatever school I want, but I don't know. Whoever, I don't see why not? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> whoever accepts me. <laughs> but what do you want to study? I want to do either occupational therapy or speech therapy. That's awesome. That is wonderful. Giving it back. Did you guys see the last picture? You know you were in the presence of royalty. Miami Trace Prom King, thank you very much. Yeah. You didn't bring the crown today? I think that would have been a nice I didn't touch. Get yeah. one, man. Oh, that's not okay. I know. That's not cool. Questions for Kobe, his family, our first responders. One back here. Uh, not really. I mean, the left side of my body is kind of like left hand. I can move my right hand fine. The left is kind of slow to come back. And then my knee is, it, at first it was like, I can move it past like this. And now it's like, I can move it however. But it just, it, it kind of hurts it a lot of the time. I wouldn't say sometimes, but it's pretty frequent, so. But really the only limitation is my hand, because it's not as reliable, I guess. But. Kobe, thank you so much for being here. We're so thrilled to see you doing so well. It's thank a pleasure you. to have you up here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kobe, is this is this the first time you've seen some of these guys? Actually, I've seen. Them. Yeah, these three are the first time I've seen. That's great. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. That, uh, that, that, right, that right there without, it doesn't even need to be said. That, that's why we do what we do. That is phenomenal. And it is such a tribute to the men and women in this room and the men and women of this profession, how well you work together in austere conditions to give lives back to young people like this. It's, it's fantastic. You all have my thanks. And,